Hi everyone, this is another um, instruction video about making lectures more technical part. Most of us know how to use Beamer or PowerPoint and Google Slides um, to make this um, kind of content more dynamic and you want to hide the certain part and uh, you know show progressively not just showing the whole thing. You can do that in the Beamer but I know I've done that. It takes a lot of time to make it uh, like that. So um, going back to old technology, you have the, think about the overhead projector. You have overhead projector and you used to just to block the content and showing it you know, gradually. That's exactly what I'm about to do. And I find this using this particular software, Inkscape, is convenient to, to do that. Maybe there's a, a, um, other software who can do what we are about to do, but it's certainly free software, works very well. That's what I'm about to introduce in here. Um, many of you already know how to do this screenshot, um, but if you don't know, if you're looking for a better, better uh, one than just a, you know screenshotting the whole uh, entire uh, desktop and then cropping out, this screenshot's really nice. Um, so it's a free software. You can go ahead and download this. And once you download it, if you go to setting, you can use this um, caption, a capture region, and then I set my own hotkey there. Then you can only, you know, drag and select the part you want to screenshot. That's really convenient. Now this is the website of Inkscape. You go down and download this Inkscape. This is a vector drawing software. Um, but uh, so here, here's the concept. We're going to create two layers. One, uh, the bottom layer is the source, your written lecture note usually, or you can generate long LaTeX slide. And the second layer will be the block. So we can, we, we're going to uh, lock the bottom layer. So whatever we do on top of it, it's not going to change anything. So it's, that's a convenient feature, two different layers and blocking, just like we've been doing with the overhead projector uh, all days. So for example, like this, the way I do it is, as you can see in the left side or right side in your screen, left side probably, that I use Microsoft Paint and write down the solutions, think about all the matrices, very difficult to typeset. You just write it down um, as you prepare, as you, you know, you kind of do the lecture or prepare the solutions and then copy and paste into this long, um, you know, photo file. And then we can scroll up and down and blocking the contents and that's how we're gonna um, you know control the you know what part to show and how to go back and forth of a certain thing It's more like the those sliding blackboards you you see in the large lecture room in the conference it's uh, kind of like that so I also find it I've done this before also find it going back and forth and um, strolling like that it's far better than just changing the pages um, there's a certain nostalgia to this to this feature of scrolling up and down in here so uh, let's go ahead and download Inkscape and uh, if you run it go ahead and force to save uh, this uh, blank document into whatever the name you want next thing is in go ahead and import under file there's import and um, this is dialogue you have to choose embed is going to make the file size slightly bigger maybe a little clunky because it's embedded but it's not too bad so go ahead and embed the photo then and as soon as you selected and imported your image is probably automatically selected and you can see it's kind of selected in the document then go ahead and file and find this menu document properties and the document property you can find underneath it resize page to contents it has all a background canvas if you choose that it's going to resize the canvas to perfectly fit into the selection of your, your image now if you select that resize page content and um, I'm not sure because I was interrupted I'm not sure if I said this or not but go ahead and do that and then it's gonna um, resize the whole thing next part is this the bottom part if you look at the bottom of this inkscape you will see this uh, eye picture and this lock symbol so if you change that to unlock to lock 
and it's going to lock this layer just imported and to uh, click in uh, wherever whatever you do it's not going to change the location of your pictures or anything so we want to lock those then we want to add layer where we're going to create this block so go to layer and add layer and once you add layer and name it i named it block and then if you click on this arrow you can see there's a, a block and then lock layer was created now if you change the zoom to the original level then you're going to see the whole thing um, in the right sides now we're going to create the block it's on the left side as you can see there's a square symbol if you click on that and drag and create a um, one size of this block and click on that arrow at the top of this left side menu and that's gonna um, it's gonna change that to this shape where it's a selection mode and you can use any of these arrows and drag and resize this entire entire thing the goal is that we're gonna block the whole thing I hope uh, this is the next one so I change on the lower right corner there is a view part and you can change the, the zoom out to really small so that you can see the whole this long lecture note and you can easily just drag and the block the whole thing and as you slowly show and then as you go and explain and that's uh, what this is about and uh, you go back to the original size now this is you have to right click on some of, uh, somewhere in this block square and choose this fill and stroke to create an opacity you may skip this part if you don't like uh, this changing opacity level but it's useful because you don't remember everything you have written down so fill and stroke and just under the fill tab you can see there's opacity actually this opacity shows everywhere but fill tab is right that that you have to go to the fill tab and there's a different opacity for each of them i think to change that to the 90 percent then you can you know kind of see what's underneath that block a little bit and then go to this stroke style and change the width of the boundary and that's uh, again this is optional you can skip this part but once you've done this it's going to change the length uh, you know the, the border line a little bit you know um, thinner and I'm not sure if you can see it I can kind of see it here too underneath this block you can you know see the contents a little bit so as you explain and you have an anticipation of which one's next so you can you know speak properly into anticipating which part is a next part stuff like that and here I created another block uh, because it's quite useful not just line by line sometimes you just want to show this part and not showing the this, you know, uh, the second half of the line and then the second block is really useful it's easy to move things around you know it's quite physical as if you're really handling this piece of paper and overhead projector so I find it's really easy to maneuver uh, this thing and it's natural so that's why I recommend often I have to use this two additional block it is quite useful and then there is this long block and uh, having the same opacity level and all that you can just click on control D on this one here for example or that one it's going to duplicate with all the conditions the same so it's quite a useful thing to do so I'm just going to show you the actual Inkscape and uh, give you a little demo lecture and give you a feel that how this Inkscape you know uh, overhead projector like lecture is going to look like right this is ready now actually I didn't select the entire full desktop if you see o um, OBS there's a scene where you can choose a window so it only captures the active window or selected window so even though my um, Inkscape window is smaller in this full screen the OBS is only capturing these windows this is not hard to do you can do that probably yourself so here is a lecture so pretend you are the students I'm a lecturer and begin to lecture like this this is an old uh, a solution of some old homework problem you begin to read if b is less than zero let's set b zero to be negative b and that this b zero is going to be a positive number since we have established a certain result for this positive uh, parameter so that's why we're using this so b zero is now negative version of b so it's going to be positive given an a probably an integer 
there is Q0 and R0. This is supposed to be division algorithm. Um, Q0, the quotient, and R0, the remainder, such that negative A, which is probably a positive number, and there is a quotient, um, divisor is B0, that's a positive number, and there's going to be a remainder, where the remainder size is between 0 and B0. Then um, you look at, it's kind of hard to see, probably 90% is not good enough. I chose the 90%, and it's kind of because of my camera, I'm just kind of looking down, it's not uh, bright enough. But you can always uh, pause the video and see what's underneath it and gather yourself a little bit and then ready to go, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pause. Right, I sneak peeked what's underneath it and prepared myself. If it is a little, even a little lighter, probably you can do it better. I didn't even prepare for this lecture, so I didn't really know what's going on. So I had to read it a little bit. Now, this is the equation you established because negative a is a positive number so we have that equation from the earlier result the long division algorithm for positive number positive dividend and positive divisors so we got this one now if you multiply negative and then um, negative is distributed here to this term and the second term and you can put that negative to this b0 which is going to be negative number there and uh, negative r0 that whole thing is going to be b later the problem is this negative um, r0 negative r0 is no longer in between 0 and b0 so it does not qualify this part is not going to qualify as a, a remainder we usually require in between 0 and b0 another pause all right so now we have this equation and then we have to somewhat um, pull out on quantity here that is a greater than or equal to 0 and less than b0 and this is a trick and you can go ahead and add b0 to this number and then it's this quantity will satisfy that and adding and subtracting b0 will not quite change the uh, this part in here which is supposed to be integer multiple of b as long as we accomplish that and this is going to be all right so this is a trick this r is going to be defined is b0 minus r0 and if r0 was already 0 that already quant um, qualifies as a um, remainder let's see that can happen r0 if you think about it a little bit r0 being 0 it can happen so we have to deal with these two things now I'm going to pull down this um, you know pull it down like this I'm going to show you actually rather than pausing the video and then okay I'm going to show you the next part and hiding this one like this a little bit Maybe this whole thing changed my mind. So here's the situation. If R0 is not, and then you can scroll up like this if you want attention on, on the top part there. And I really like this feature of scrolling up and down and control being able to control like that. So if R0 is not 0, and then we're going to replace this R0 in terms of this formula. R0, you can see, is a B0 minus R. So if you put that in there, it changes to, and I said this wrong, R0 is over there. Um, this R minus B0, well, that's right, what we have here is a negative R0, a negative R0 is simply this R minus B0, so R minus B0 go there, and um, if you put it by definition, negative B0 is a positive B, um, so we can switch to that, and you can see this, you can pull out um, B and turn this one into integer multiple, and then there is a remainder uh, which is um, is going to qualify because we subtracted from R0. Um, it's going to qualify as a remainder. So altogether, you rewrite it like this. Um, and you handle um, when the case is R0 equals 0 and so on. So in this fashion, you're going to explain lectures like that and gradually moving up and down um, like this. And you can go back and the certain part and explain the earlier part or something like that. So I find this one um, easiest and fastest way to prepare a lecture and all the way to the final product and the video lectures like that. So um, it's probably the easiest way to make the lecture more dynamic than just showing the entire thing. Right. Thanks for listening. Bye.